Dear Heavenly Father, I give thanks that we can meet here and uh, have a presentation concerning time setting. It's a, a subject that is very contentious. Um, it's a subject where those who present it can be accused of fanaticism, that they can be mocked. And um, it's not a position that I would desire to go into willingly, but I believe it's your hand that has been leading me here. I wouldn't uh, have thought, I couldn't have planned myself to be here today speaking on this sub subject, but I've seen your hand opening the way for me to be here, Father, and I pray that your Holy Spirit be with me and help me present it in a clear manner and that it be beneficial and edifying to the people in this room and those listening in the web. And ask your blessing and your Holy Spirit upon me this day in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, Elder Jeff has asked me to do a presentation where we see November 9 as a way mark in Millerite history. And that can relate to 9-11, or sorry, 11th of November in our history. <clears throat> In uh, 2018, around the summer of 2018, I decided just to have a look and to see how many days Christ um, performed his work in the holy place in heaven. And, and looking at that there date, I just I, I, I came to understand that he, he would have begun that work at an, at an, in his ascension uh, 40 days after the, the resurrection and then he then on 50 days after that resurrection on the day of Pentecost um, he then began to do that work in a more with full authority so there seems to be a difference between them 10 days where you could include both days so I put the, the number in the date calendar. There's, online, there's an online date calendar. You can then put in the date that Christ began his work in the holy place. And then we, we know that it, he ended that work on the 22nd of October 1844. And then you can just simply just put them dates in and calculate the number of days um, that Christ done that work uh, in the holy place. <clears throat> So in AD 31, Christ was crucified on a Friday, the 27th of April. And he rose on the 29th of April. That was a Sunday, so that was the Feast of First Fruits. <clears throat> 40 days later, he's with the disciples for them 40 days. And then on the 7th of June, he ascends to the, the holy place, to the Father. <clears throat> But in, and then on the 17th of June, on um, Pentecost, he then uh, pours out the whole Holy Spirit. So if you're going to calculate this here date from Pentecost to the 22nd of October, 1844, it comes to 662,314 days. If you're going to include the ascension, that will be and that it would be 324 days would be the last few numbers there. <clears throat> so this here number equates to 18, 13 years, 1,813 years, 4 months and 5 days. And so that would be 15 days if you're going to include the, the ascension. I want to highlight this quote from uh, Prophets and Kings. Prophets. Sorry, Peter Oaks and Prophets, 357, uh, paragraph 
Um, it's in your notes, but it's uh, maybe... Top it's, page two. Yes. It says, As Christ's ministration was to consist of two great divisions, each occupying a period of time and having a distinctive place in the heavenly sanctuary, so the typical ministration consisted of two divisions, the daily and the yearly service, and to each a department of the tabernacle was devoted. So we just want to pick up that first line, as Christ's ministration was to consist of two great divisions, each occupying a period of time, we can now discern what that period of time was. And that was 662,314 days, or with, uh, that was with full authority. Uh, if you go back to the, the very first page, and uh, there's a quote there from Acts of the Apostles, page 39 and 40. It says, Christ's ascension to heaven was a signal that his followers were to receive the promised blessing. So this is after 40 days. So he, he ascends to heaven and he goes to the most holy place so you can mug it from there. For this they were to wait before they entered upon their work. When Christ passed within the heavenly gates, he was enthroned amidst the adoration of angels. As soon as this ceremony was completed, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in rich currents, and Christ was indeed glorified, even with the glory which he had with the Father from all eternity. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the Redeemer's inauguration was completed. According to his promise, he sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to his followers as a token that he had, as priest and king, received all authority in heaven on, and on earth and was the anointed one over his people. So we see there at Pentecost, he had then received all authority. There's a, a distinction between that uh, from the first ten days, from the from his ascension, there's something element which, as a high priest, he, he was somewhat limited, but then coming to Pentecost, uh, he had a, a greater authority. And um, so I've I'm more going to focus on this here, number of days um, in the study uh, to represent Christ's work in the, in, the, as in the Holy Priest ministration in heaven. Um, so when I first found out this here period of administration of Christ, I, I then got to think about what the, the type was what could typify it? And um, we know that there's another quote. Um, in the very top of page two, it's Patriarchs and Prophets, page 355, paragraph two. Ellen White says, Once a year, the great day of atonement the priests entered the most holy place for the cleansing of the sanctuary. The work there performed completed the yearly round of administration. So Christ would have had the very last year of the first or very last day of the year was going to be represented by Christ's work in the most holy place. And so the, the other three hundred whatever days would represent Christ's work in the, the holy place. When you understand the Hebrew calendar, there's not a consistent number of days in the year. Uh, the, way, the way their calendar works, it's a, called a, a lunar solar calendar. And normally, uh, it would consist of either 354 days or 355 days a year. And then you had, had one day then at the end of that, which would have been when Christ, or sorry, when the high priest went into the most holy place on the day of atonement. But uh, out of, so out of every 19 years, seven of those years would have an extra month. And so 
the year would actually last either 383 years, sorry, 383 days or 384 days. So there's no real consistent um, number of days in a Hebrew year that we could uh, compare to see uh, how much one day of those uh, would uh, equate to, so how many days, one day of those would equate to how many days in Christ's actual work in the heavenly sanctuary. But we have the, the symbol of prophetic time, which is pretty consistent. Uh, in the Bible we understand that prophetic, a prophetic year would have 360 days. And so 359 of them would represent Christ's work um, in the heavenly sanctuary, uh, in the holy place. And then one day would represent um, his work then in the most holy place. So does that, people understand where I'm going with this? Uh -huh. So, you're going to use a prophetic year to do your calculation. Yes, rather than the actual Hebrew years. Hebrew, why they actually operate it? <clears throat> so, if we if we um, see that three hundred three hundred fifty nine days is then uh, a symbol of these here actual number of days that Christ performed his work in the holy place and we divide that into this here number we find that it equates to 1844 days and then there's a, a, like a decimal point and you can then work out from that their decimal point uh, to, to make it into like a uh, into time and so it would be 1844 days, 21 hours, 15 minutes, and then it would take you to the, th to the, to the 33rd second, or to the, you could round it up to just three, 33 seconds. Um, I'm just going to ignore this here for the time being. I'll talk about that later, because I want to maybe, I want to focus mostly on seeing the November 9 in Millerite history. So we know then that these here number of days that Christ was in the holy place ministering in heaven was ended on the 22nd of October 1844. And so if we take the, the time when he began his work in the most holy place in heaven uh, representing uh, if we're going to follow this here, 359 to 1 ratio, Christ would then continue on his work in the most holy place for 1,844 days. And uh, if we add that number of days to the 22nd of October, 1844, we find that it comes to November 9th in 1849. And we can all maybe look at, not understand that 49 is maybe like a symbol of the 490, which is like a close of uh, probation. And we have a quote from First Selected Messages, uh, page 68 on paragraph 1. And I think El might write this around the years uh, 1880s. So we'll just uh, read that quote. It's on this here somewhere. It's on page 3. Bottom of the page, second from the bottom. Thank you. Elmite says, Had Adventists, after the great disappointment in 1844, held fast their faith and followed on unitedly in the opening providence of God, receiving the message of the third angel and in the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming it to the world they have, would have seen the salvation of God, the Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts, the work would have been completed, and Christ would have come ere this to receive his, his people to their reward. So, there is uh, evidence then from this here quote that Christ would have came back, and if this was represented as a close of probation, 
um, then Christ would have come back uh, sometime thereafter. Um, there would have been, we understand that during the, uh, the, the time period of uh, Noah, that he was in the ark and there was a close of probation then when the, when the door was shut. Um, but still, time continued on. Um, <clears throat> and so, this here we could maybe say, say that this was maybe just applied to Israel and this was maybe applied for the Millerites. And then thereafter, in 1850, they could have then gone on to uh, proclaim the gospel to bring in a harvest of uh, the rest of the people in the world. And uh, the, the idea is then that the Lord would have came in 1863. <clears throat> so that's some thoughts that people have had uh, concerning um, this here date as to what it would represent in the Millerite history. We know that the, the midnight cry just lasted a, a number of months and Elmite says it was like a, a tidal wave. And so in, a, in, like in two months' time, a great work can be done. And so this, was like, this equates to five years and about 19 days. And so if, if they could do that amount, a great amount of work in two months during the midnight cry, uh, if they had the similar faith, and Elmite says, uh, if they had held fast their faith and followed on unitedly in the opening providence of God, receiving the message of the third angel in the power of the Holy Spirit, pro proclaiming it to the world, they would have seen the salvation of God. Uh, the Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts. So there is a potential then after this here date, in this time period, that the Millerites could have done a work in then five years with uh, greater than the midnight cry, you know, for that was only like two months, but in that sort of, um, like a, a, an even greater tidal wave, you could maybe say. So that's just some thoughts as to how November 9 could have fitted in into that history. I want to take you to, uh, to the applying November 9th now to or history, as we know that it's only coming in five days' time, okay? And we can see then that there's a, this is something we understand, that there's two 2520s in the Bible that Hiram Edson identified. Well, he certainly identified this one, and this one was uh, already um, established by William Miller. And we understand that from 723 BC, there's a 2520 that ends in 1798. And then from 677 BC, when Manasseh was uh, taken captive by Assyria into Babylon, there's another 2520 years that extend to the 22nd of October, 1844. This year we don't have really a specific date uh, in 1798. You could maybe locate it sometime around February. Um, and this one here, we have a specific date. So we, in this movement, we understand this here, 2520. Uh, these two 2520s um, are paralleled in our history by the number 126. And we understand that from when the Seventh-day Adventist Church was formed in 1863, we have 126 years, that takes us to 1989, and we can be specific with this date, it's 9th of November, we know that was when the Berlin, fall, the Berlin Wall fell down, or became, um, it was sort of beginning the demise of the Soviet Union. And then from 1888, we have another 126 years, and we can apply that then as following this pattern, we can then locate the date, in 2014, the 22nd of October, uh, in 2014. So we have, at the end of these 126s, we can identify the 9th of November and the 22nd of October. And then if we add 1844 days, as we, could, as we did 
uh, in this year time period to get this year date, we can then apply 1844 days, and that will bring us to November 9th, 2019. <coughs> um, I had uh, understood this in the summer of 2018, so this was before um, Sister Tess was here presenting that message, and to me that helped having that understanding of having a close of probation in Millerite history, of seeing it there the 9th of November, I could see it when, when Tess was then presenting it. I, I wasn't uh, resisting it. You know, it was something that um, I, I connected with. It kind of, I, I didn't, uh, to me, I was, I was quite, I, was, I thought this here was evidence that supported it. Uh, Sister Tessa's message of the 9th of November in 2019 <coughs> as a close to probation. I don't think she was aware of it. No, I don't think she... I, I had just... Her message was supporting what you discovered. Because you, you discovered it first. Well, I think she probably had that... and She hadn't presented it at that their time. I think even Perminder knew that November 9th in the Italian camp meeting... He had already suggested through a, a just he had it he, through a quote that he used that was something that was wrote it was a paragraph nine on it was wrote in November. It, he he re, was already aware of and that that was in June 2018 that he was already aware of the 9th of November as a as a way mark that was he was seeking that was going to be established it was hoping to see it established anyway. He just wasn't willing to tell anyone until it was the appropriate time. He said he hadn't even heard it all told us. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. I think he just wasn't, yeah. He was kind of putting it out there, just like uh, subtly, you know, emphasizing it. In this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll just move on to, the, to this study as well. This is uh, lining up. This is a, a period of 140 years. And from 677 BC, this is when Manasseh is taken into captivity to Babylon by uh, Assyria. And this is the first seven times in Leviticus 26 Verse 18, this is the breaking of the pride of their power. We understand that. And um, we can associate a 70 year period with this. Um, to, uh, that takes us to the year 607 BC. And this is when the, the 70 year captivity of, the, of, um, of, of Judah going into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. This was you would have Daniel and his three friends. Uh, in this here, this is during the reign of Jehoiakim. And uh, he's, this here marks the beginning of the, the second period of 200, uh, the second 25, 20, seven years or seven times. In, in verse 21 of Leviticus 26. And so these 70 years then bring us to 537 BC. And Ellen White says in Prophets and Kings, I, I don't have it, I heard it this morning, I was listening to it, so I don't have the page number, but she says that the ascension to the throne of Cyrus marked the end of the 70 year period of captivity in Babylon. <clears throat> so that's something I, I can maybe can we dig out and add it to the, the study? So what, what you find here is that it seems to be this here, two periods of 70 years, we can then connect to either, you can have it maybe as one period of 140 years, or you can even divide it about into two periods of 70 years with the, the year 1919 in the centre. And this was when the... Um, Bible conference occurred, and you could maybe even mark uh, that was when W. W. Prescott was 
basically the, the main speaker that, during the presentations at that Bible conference. Beginning of the third generation? Yes. So we marked there the beginning of the third generation. Of, and, and, and there was like a, a corruption of Adventism's prophetic understanding. So if we line up the uh, beginning of them 40 years, 140 years, uh, with, uh, from 677 BC, we line that up with the 9th of November, 1849. And it's, uh, we can see that it, it comes to the 9th of November, 18, 1989. Um, we can understand this here, 537 BC being the time of the end. Uh, in this history, uh, Ellen White and Patriarchs and Prophets and Kings, page 714, I believe, she equates the the seventy year captivity of the Judah of Judah in Babylon to the twelve hundred and sixty years of the the papal persecution of Christians from five thirty eight to seventeen ninety eight. And we know seventeen ninety eight is the time of the end. So therefore at the end of this seventy we can have a time of the end. And we know that for our time the 9th of November 1989 is the time of the end for us as well. So, is that clear enough? Things okay? Um, so I just want to maybe have a, a look at how there could be even meaning in these here 21 hours, 15 minutes, and the 33 seconds. That is the the over, above, which is over and above the 1844 days. And uh, there's a lot of symbolism there that we can maybe equate to the to the cross. Uh, from this here, uh, we understand that the the 21 hours is equating to 1260 minutes, and we know that uh, 1260 can be represented by the three and a half years of Christ's work uh, from the baptism to the cross. And we have in Daniel um, 9 27, I think, that Christ is crucified, uh, sacrifice and oblation will cease in the, in the midst of the week, which is marking the cross. So we have that at 1260. So we can see that they are bringing us to the cross. Uh, the 15 minutes and 33 seconds uh, can bring us to the year 1533 BC. And in 1533 BC, it's, it's the year I understand, and I think there's evidence, I'll, I'll go into it here, uh, that that was the year that the Passover was. And then the the Israelites left Egypt and went to Mount Sinai and the law was proclaimed. And so the Passover then is like a typification of the cross. The first Passover, 1533 BC. Yes. Okay, so that was, yes, the original Passover. <clears throat> and so this year time period of 21 hours, 15 minutes and 33 seconds uh, is really equating to the ninth hour, which is between uh, 3 and 4 p.m. And that was the, the time of the day when Christ died on the cross. He began his work on the cross. He began his... Um, began, he was put on the cross around... So you're saying if you go 21 hours into a biblical day, you come to the ninth hour. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and Mark 15, is a verse that uh, takes us to that ninth hour. It may well be on here somewhere. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. <clears throat> yeah, so in the, the Gospel of Mark, in chapter 15, it's the first, actually, the first 33 that then brings us to the ninth hour. And if you're going to... Put this here time period and represent it on an analog clock. It uh, has 9:15, 9, 
and it'll bring you to the 33rd second and it has like the shape of the cross there as well and it has um, it's more like as if you're the perspective of it is that you're looking up at the cross and you're slightly off to the, the left hand side if, if Christ was on the cross here you'd be like there looking up and Christ on the cross I just thought that was an interesting observation as well <clears throat> if you're going to add Christ's uh, ascension uh, the time period as the time period that's going to begin his work in the in the holy place and so that would be an extra 10 days added to this it would bring you to the it would still be 1844 days, 21 hours, but it would be, it would be f equating to 55 minutes and it would bring you to the 40th second. And I had already awareness, I had done a study in the dimensions of the 1843 chart that the, the, the original dimensions of it uh, were 55 inches by 40 inches. So I just thought that was just something I'm not putting a lot of weight on it but just kind of interesting as well and so I just want to uh, clarify how we get this here date uh, 1533 BC for the Passover uh, we understand the siege of Jerusalem begins in 587 587 and this is, these are all BC dates. And then Ezekiel, he lies on his side, his left side for 390 days, which takes us to the division. We, we go backwards, and this is the division um, that occurred during the time of Rehoboam. And uh, soon after Solomon died. And um, then... We can then go further back and we find that there's 36 years from when the, the temple began. If you read First Kings, first six, sorry, chapter six, verse one, it should be here somewhere. Maybe it's not. No, it's, um, maybe just read that. First Kings, chapter six, verse one. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we understand that Solomon reigned 40 years, so that the temple doesn't get started to be built until four years into his reign. And so there will be 36 years left. For him, so we can place this the the 480 years then ending in the year 1013. And we'll take us back to the year 1493 BC. And uh, you could then, with the words saying coming out of Egypt, that it's marking that there, you could maybe assume that that's marking when the, the, they crossed the Red Sea and came out of Egypt and went to Mount Sinai. But you have problems if you do that. Uh, if you do the chronology of the judges, you'll find that it will be a very short time. If you're going to take 40 years, then after that, if they're going to have... They would then cross the Jordan in the year 1453 here. And then that would leave a very short time period if you're going to calculate all, all the, the, how, how long the judges actually judged. All them, all them dates, it would be a very short time. So you, you're more beneficial to have a longer time here, and then you can we can ascertain that the uh, that in the year 1493, there's a, a date when the in Exodus chapter 16, when we understand that, it's, that the there's a, a Sabbath day, and then the next day there's going to be six days when the man is going to fall and then it's not going to fall in the, seventh, in the Sabbath and it's uh, six in Exodus chapter 16 and it talks about on the 15th day 
of the second month. So that would have to be a Sabbath. And that's when the Israelites are going to murmur <coughs> about needing food. And uh, after that, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a passage. So they're going to complain on that day about wanting food. So the manna is going to fall the following day. And so the, we are, we, we, it can be calculated that the that the that their Sabbath day uh, doesn't fit with this here, year 1493. It wouldn't. It doesn't fit chronologically wise. But if we if we understand that they crossed the River Jordan was is what is meant by the the phrase coming out of Egypt in First Kings six, uh, verse one. Then we can understand that it will take us back to this would be the time period of the, uh, them in the wilderness of the Israelites in the wilderness. And the Passover would then be in 1533. And the Sabbath does fall on the 15th day of the second month in the year 1533. So that's just really to clarify, justifying uh, this year, 1533 date for the the Passover. So that's... uh, If you want to go into the, the study of Judges, and you can find that the, the chronology is, 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 is not. Um, you need I mean, it's more beneficial to have a longer chronology for that period. So that completes this study, and um, I can I have about twenty five minutes left, so I could go on to another study uh, if you want if you want me to do that. It's about the 777 days. So I'm not going to get this done in 25 minutes, but uh, I'll make a start. Um, I could maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if it's if, if it's good to end what you did to now, right now, and then do one other full presentation another time, that will work as well, rather than mm-hmm. have just a little bit left over. Okay. But you decide. You know your material. I don't. Mm-hmm. Right. Know? Okay. Well, yeah. Then we'll just close it there then, and. Uh, and you're going to do another presentation. You can touch on this another time. Well, okay. Good. Yes, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that uh, we can bow down and have our prayers come before your throne of grace. And Father, that you hear us. And Father, we seek to be willing servants to you that we know that there's been counsel against time setting from the Elmite writings, but we've seen your hand in recent months and days that give evidence that uh, we're living in a time when we can identify time, and for us to deny it would be like being unfaithful, I believe, is such as the evidence. And, but if it is to come to pass, Father, that what we're identifying, Father, that I believe that you would have us present this to the world to let them look, look at it and to see if it is so, if these things what we're finding out is so, Father. And uh, we just seek to be faithful and just trust that you're leading us and uh, we've identified the November, November the 9th in Millerite history and it has been a topic in, the, in our history now as well we can see connections to it and Father help us prepare for whatever is to take place this coming Sabbath that uh, we can be representing your character to this world and to others in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and beyond ask these things in Jesus name Amen